If you use a phone as your lifeline alert, are you able to access it when needed? Or do your IBM fumbling hands and stiff fingers make it real hard to grasp and use your cell phone? Hi, Jerry here again for my IB Myositis YouTube channel viewers. Thank you for selecting this video. As your inclusion body myositis advances into the third stage or having a functional rating scale score in the mid-teens or less, you probably find yourself trying to become more and more active on media devices such as a cell phone, tablet, or computer, possibly due to your inability to do so many other things anymore due to your diminished hand and finger dexterity and poor arm strength. If you do not have a hand and finger problem mentioned in this video, consider yourself fortunate but remember these tips for a later time in your IBM journey. This episode identifies a few helpers that I have found useful in my IBM journey, especially in the more recent months as my IBM advances to seriously affect my arm and hand strength and dexterity. I must caution you because drinking a little wine may also be involved as a solution for one of these tech device handling problems. And, Near the end of this video, but not technology related, I will also show you an inexpensive way to get food to your mouth if your hands and arms no longer want to cooperate using conventional methods and you can still swallow solid foods. But first, let's cover a few technology device issues that I overcame with some simple fixes. Beginning about three years ago, I could no longer grab my phone from my shirt pocket for a couple of reasons. First, my forearm and bicep muscles were so diminished that I could no longer control my right hand and fingers to grasp the phone out of my chest pocket when and if it rings. And second, my heart pacemaker company suggests not placing a cell phone directly over their product. So. I installed a lanyard on my phone called a phone lasso, so I can retrieve it from my pants pocket or hang it from my neck or power chair. Since installing the cell lasso, I've also eliminated dropping the phone onto the floor where it was very difficult for me to retrieve. The lasso adheres to the back of the phone and is thin enough that you can still reinstall your own personal cover over it. If I was sitting in my lift chair recliner and wanted to use my tablet, I found it difficult to grasp it without either dropping it or accidentally pressing an application button along the edge of the screen. Now my caregiver simply inserts the tablet into this gooseneck tablet holder that I purchased about six months ago. This gooseneck stand clamps on to the hospital table moved in front of my lift chair and provides me access to my tablet without the chance of fumbling or dropping it. This gooseneck holder can also hold a tablet or phone and can be clamped to a side table near your chair. As many tablets and phones have screens that are very close to the edges, this holder has eliminated those accidental application changes that result in trying to hang on to these devices with IBM fingers and hands. If you are in or near the advanced stage of IBM, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. If your weak IBM hands and arms can no longer reach across your body to access the screen on your tablet or phone, perhaps a Bluetooth wireless mouse will add to your successful operation of your media device when seated at a desk or table. A Bluetooth wireless mouse can be purchased for under $10 these days and are quite easily paired to the Bluetooth function on your smartphone or tablet. Between the gooseneck holder supporting my tablet and operating the wireless mouse on my hospital bed table rolled in front of my lift recliner, I have given myself some additional time having the ability to successfully use these devices. Speaking of the table, if you ever run across a hospital bed table on sale anywhere, you might consider purchasing it. I find this addition high on my list of aids that I use daily, usually in front of my lift chair to eat some meals from, as well as to keep my tech devices readily available. And in the future, when I'm totally bedridden, 
It will even be used in its original intent as my hospital bed table. I use a similar tablet holder when I'm in bed that can also be adjusted and rotated to the desired position. So whether I've got my head on my pillow watching a Netflix movie or listening to a book via the BARD application from the National Library Service, I can be comfortable doing it. This holder can also be used while sitting up in bed by resting it on your lap, hanging it around your neck, or even put on your hospital bed table. When in bed, I also use a cheap $2 pillow speaker that allows me to hear the audio without disturbing anyone else. Now let's talk about drinking a little wine as I mentioned earlier in this video. My loving wife and caregiver noticed how difficult it was for me to grasp and plug in the charging cord to my tablet or cell phone with my weak and fumbling IBM fingers and hands. Being the resourceful crafter that she is, she improved my ability to grasp and plug in the charging cord all by myself by using a wine bottle cork. She drilled a hole in one end to accept the cord's plug end, then drilled a hole through the cork the same diameter as a charging cord cable. She carefully sliced the bottle cork lengthways through half of it to allow insertion of the cord's cable into the cork. The job was completed by using superglue to weld the spliced cut back together again tightly around the cord. Thank you, honey. My IBM fingers now have a larger, lightweight means of grasping and plugging in the charging cord into my tablet or cell phone. This bottle cork handle might also increase the life of the cord that always fail where the cord enters the micro plug. See, drinking a little wine does offer us IBMers a benefit and offers us a secondary use for that wine bottle cork. Now I have to count up all the cords I have in the house and go buy some more wine. If making a cord holder from a wine cork is not in your bag of capabilities, there are cord bites available on eBay that will accomplish the same feat, but without the pleasure of enjoying a nice glass of wine. If weak IBM hands and fingers start causing problems grasping or activating a standard computer mouse, perhaps a change to a vertical mouse might add additional time to your tech device ability. I purchased an inexpensive vertical mouse to see if it would result in an in improvement of my mouse clicking ability if for no other reason than just a more comfortable position for my hand and arm. Either the angle seems a little wrong for me or I'm just so m used to the standard wireless mouse, so I'll grade this experiment as only a C, although your experience might be different. A vertical mouse is available using a USB dongle receiver or using Bluetooth technology, your choice when purchasing. Now for that bonus idea regarding an inexpensive eating tool to use at home or at your favorite restaurant. Due to your IBM, do you look or feel like a contortionist just getting food up to your mouth? In an earlier IB myositis video, I described how to rig a belt to help hoist food up to your mouth. That belt works, but there are alternatives to that idea. My first IB myositis video featured an eating device made by Liftware. The Liftware level has been dependable for me, but here's a less expensive alternative. Purchase yourself a bag of inexpensive wood skewers, you know, the type that would be used in making shish kebabs, and use them to spear your food and pivot each food morsel up to your mouth. If you already have your caregiver cut your food for you, this tool will help you get the food into your mouth and even allows you to dip your favorite food in dipping sauce or gravy before easily pivoting it up to your mouth. It's easy and lightweight to use and requires little effort. There, that's your bonus tip for this episode for use at home or at your favorite eating place. It really works for me and I hope it works for you too. Well, that's a few more ideas to make IBM lives a bit easier for us. I hope you enjoy watching my IB Myositis channel videos as I share a few successful tools and info that I use just to remain a bit functional. 
I wish I could include info on how to eradicate this disease, but I'll leave that to the experts. I can only share my IBM life experiences and how I managed to cope with some of the same things that plague so many with this horrible muscle disease. Please click the like button and also share this video with your family and friends. You never know, maybe one of the props mentioned in this video will become a Christmas or birthday present for you. So I'll leave a few links to the products mentioned in this video in the info section below your video screen. Be good my friends and stay strong.